Jazz, not Joyce, but Jace. Not Jason. Not Bartok. No. Bartok. Exactly. Yeah. Not Bar- I feel I'm in Bartokia. See, it's starting up the, this nonsense. No, I'm just kidding. You should be able to just say or do anything you wish, because that's, that's, you know, anything's allowed. Anything's allowed. Anything. Anything, anything goes. <laughs> you want to break into song, poetry, you want to read a poem, you want to, whatever you want to do. Now that it's gone, this beautiful day. Gath the cold eye on life, on death, the horsemen pass by. What is that from? Yeats. Oh. That's a first on the podcast. So, so seriously, you do exactly what I said not to do. So, No, somebody hold it. If you're going to hold it, hold it. If you're going to talk. I wasn't ready for but I know I wasn't ready for the I'm not, I don't mean to scold. Anyway, the holdout is, holdouts, would you describe, if somebody describe, is it a, is it a web series? To a over series? to you, Gita Swallow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, over to it's, you. It's well, It was meant to be a web series when Dan and I first <laughs> wanted to. Yes do this you know to write it but you know it's really it's an episodic tv series you know we wanted to do a full half hour pilot Mm -hmm. you know because we thought it had the weight to do that you know there's great characters good story and a lot of uh relevant topics like you know hyper gentrification and disappearing middle class of new york so we we felt we could really that it was more than like five or ten minute episodes you know yeah there was an actual real story that was kind of you know, that people all around the country could kind of relate to because it's like it happening is, everywhere. That is true. To go back to the weights and uh, what we're calling this kind of platformer series, because the typical web series is supposed to be five, ten, I don't know, five or ten minutes, but there, I don't know if there's rules around that or common understandings around what it makes a web series versus something else. But now that so much stuff is on the internet anyway, it's, it, it, you could just say this is a series. You don't have to go further, right? I think yeah, I think it, I think it is. It's a, it's not. I think we we really. I think we all feel that it's a it's a series. It's got the weight for a series, and um, mm-hmm. and uh, we felt that when we did the pilot, which is like a prototype. But when we did the pilot, we knew right away that it was a series. And it's called the holdouts. And it, what does it refer to? The title? Does it mean Dan? Okay, so let me. Oh, I should have. I, I only got to Stephen Jedaswolo. That's okay. And Ni, Nina Lha, Dan Mankey, Jason. Oh, I did go around. <clears throat> okay, and and me. I'm Adam Sharko. So, oh Dan, what, do you want to describe the storyline? Why it's called The Holdouts? Yeah, and what the series is about. I think what we were referring to is, from our own experience, we're being like, just hold, like the last people holding out on your block that, or in your building. Like in Steve's case, they kept trying to light it on fire to get him out. Mm. Well, you know, right. Well, real estate is there are a lot of people that are living in in a lot of older buildings, say, that have a rent, that are rent stabilized or rent controlled. And the uh, owners would like nothing better but to kick out those people and then bring in people so they can increase the rent exponentially and up to market value, whatever. Right. Or sell it even maybe. So. Well, I guess an owner wouldn't do that, but they would maybe want to change the terms of the place. Yeah, well, they'll do anything to try to get you out. I mean, I think, so you know, that's what the, this premise. Uh, it, it, Kevin and I both live in the Hell's Kitchen. I had like, homeless people sleeping. They'll do anything. They'll, they'll do, do anything. anything. So th- you I just heard a story you? about. I heard a story about someone knocking on, like, a wall. Like, the owner was, like, tapping on the wall. Oh, it's like. Did we talk about that to keep the person up the whole night? Like a torture. It's, like it's a, a torture stuff. method. Yeah, yeah, and like stuff, you know, th- a it's like what is it called? Stars. A thousand st- stab. What's it called? Death by a thousand death by cuts. <laughs> by what? Death, death by death. a thousand cuts. That's it. That's what it is. It's like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kevin, did you experience that? Um, no, I, I had an apartment on Fifty First Street between Ninth and Tenth, but from nineteen ninety six till oh. twenty twelve, and and uh, I think the landlord wanted me out about halfway through that time. Mm. Um. And uh, I had an in at the at the at the realtor's office. My cousin, my cousin's, my cousin Jean's best friend uh, was uh, the landlord's favorite um, employee. She she kind of she she had influence, you know. Mm-hmm. And so uh, um, I think you know I, I I would let people stay at the apartment. And um, like when you were not there, you mean when I was not there, right? When you were, yeah. And uh, and they they uh, you know now I know they they were I never they were never once fooled. <laughs> it all came back 
to 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 get me in in the end you know after uh luann sadly passed away so i i no longer had a like a someone protecting me up right at, right at the landlord's office and and i started getting i got a letter of eviction and they said you know you could you know it's like what do i do fight it you know it, it was going to be a process right and that's another point uh cost often process. People, i mean even if you might even have the I don't know. Not, I don't know if it's law, but you might have. You might be in the in a legally in a in a safe position. But do you want to live in a hostile environment? And it can get very hostile. And which is what the series. Unsafe environment too. I mean, it gets really unsafe. Like they were lighting sure. fires in my building. There was. Uh, they they sort This of, happened to you. So you, this is based on your experience. Yeah, you know, not just to like Steven. throw it in there. And this is all of our experiences. But when just to understand, you know, when Dan and I started mm. to talk about the series, it was supposed to be based. We were trying to make a rule in the writers room that was based on things that really happened to us. So that was our entry point in it because we realized that it was happening to a lot of people. So why not start? That's where we we're coming from. Mm -hmm. It both happened to us, you know, and now it happened to Kevin. Yes. As well, I mean, that could be something to explore, like all those stories when we do more episodes, because I think they make the richest stories, you know. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I, and that's what's more Damn. hilarious than New York real estate. Mm -hmm. well, okay. just I lived anything. in an apartment. It was the mafia. It was their bachelor pad, and uh, we weren't allowed to do. You're not allowed to decorate, you, you guys. You you can live here, but you can't decorate. That's it's what a, they would say. It's a Swedish accent, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Via Canal Street. <laughs> Nothing on the walls. You put a. A nail in a wall, uh, put a nail in your coffin. Right. They would come by and, like, give oh, us really? free vegetables and stuff every oh, now sure. and then. It was a very weird, weird setting. But I think, you know, it was a combination of, like, like this kind of stories, but also we, you know, and Dan knew Kevin and Jace and really well. And, and it was like, how do we write for these two great actors and make it, you know, and, like, unearth all this crazy anger in the town because the everyone was really angry about what's happening right but it's funny underneath right so just turn right it there's a it's a, it's a comedy it's comedy. it's 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 for the fans of the odd couple it took me 15 minutes to realize that you meant felix Sanga. Oh, so i tried to do a little impression that's thank not you. bad at all thank you we're well, really blessing my apartment tonight i feel very lucky <laughs> so jace yeah. oh jason kevin uh per, really well cast uh at, but how did you thank guys you great actor what? They're great actors. That's very yeah. sweet of you. I, I agree. So how did you guys well, get... Uh, Kevin and I know each other from, like, the waiting this rooms. Jace. This is Jace. Yeah. Of of many famous movie waiting rooms. And always I'm always like, oh, when Kevin walks waiting in, I'm like... Room? Yeah, like auditioning. That's you know, like waiting you. to go in and meet the director mm -hmm. room. And, and Kevin will always come in after me, which makes me... I'm never <laughs> I'm on time, so he must be really late. And he comes in, and I see Kevin walk in, and I go, oh, hey, man. And he goes... Hey, he sits down and we just have this thing. I don't know if we've ever really had, we have a friend that we have a good friend, Lee Holmes in common, but Kevin and I never, but somehow we were on this talk show, right? Remember Dan to the right of me uh -huh. has a, a talk co show co-writer of the series. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, called the Artie need show where a little marionette, uh, mm -hmm. hosts a show and, and it's the funniest thing you've ever seen. And, and he's a little marionette's kind of like a, like a Joe Allen, Joe Joe, Allen, Joe Franklin, yeah. Joe Franklin, Franklin. and so Joe he has Franklin. these guests, and it's the, it's the funniest thing you've ever seen. Really, where and, do was one see the, What is it called? It's all all over Brooklyn. So, the Artie Need Show. The Artie Need Show. It's a talk oh, show. And he has a band, and he has guests. And Kevin and I were on. Who's the, the show. last to find out? Go ahead. Yeah, we were on the show. Oh, okay. And then we did a pilot for the show. Remember, mm -hmm. and then all this time Dan was like I want to write something for you and Kevin and I thought he was completely insane because no one has ever wanted to write anything for me they might have for Kevin because that would seem like a logical thing but for me not so oh, much and he kept this dream alive and I would like have a coffee with him and I would think this poor man he's so sweet he's so funny but he's delusional and then he's like I have this idea you're going to play yourselves and you're both actors right you're both actors and I said great whatever whatever you want to do whatever you want to do that's great nobody's ever written anything for me and then you actually came up with this plan that we're not actors but you came up we got together with Steven you came, you came up with this holdouts idea but we were still Kevin and Jace which that's I right. thought that's right I was gonna we, was it, we, we do have our own names in the show yeah right? that's correct that's right. how creative we got with the names <laughs> yeah 
And then you guys had well, some money that you got in a bag well. from somebody. <laughs> Remember you? And we yeah. shot like we shot literally like a minute of it yeah. on a night like this, a rainy night, and it, everyone loved this minute so much. Like people are still talking about this minute. And then, still right. talking. And then you got enough money to make the pilot. That's right. Because. But yeah. Dan, Dan and I, Dan Mankey, this is Kevin Corrigan. Dan, Dan and I, Dan Mankey and I, uh -huh. we talked about. I would send you right. I would send you articles by Jeremiah Moss from mm -hmm. Vanishing New York blog, mm -hmm. Vanishing New York, mm -hmm. because it just it was like everything was closing, they're, and they're, they're still closing. It's just become a way of life now. Process the foreclosures of of, of all these cl classic places that. You know, had like these uh, seventy-year leases, and, and and then the you know the people buy the air rights to to places, and and uh, to play you know na whole neighborhoods are rezoned, and right. you know it's it, it, there's, there's like you know the going back to Ed Koch, you know setting the stage for Giuliani with the uh, uh, um, um, rezoning Times Square, you know said it eventually it went from Can't what it you. was you know like the deuce. To being what it is now, but you know this is like decades, hey decades in the works. You know, yeah. You know, the, it's like uh, the whole city is is yep. like a huge pie right. that's being divvied Sliced up that's over right. decades. That's, that's exactly right. And you don't realize that you you know we're all subject to these unseen forces. Again, again the death, the, the thousand deadly cuts, because there's always gentrification in any city. It's just a natural thing that happens over a course of time with with uh, immigration. Uh, economy, all these different factors, and there's a natural thing. And it's not always optimal for certain people, of course, because maybe poor people do get pushed out. But that's you. But but there is a more organic, at least, explanation for it. What's been going on in, in cities, especially like New York City and others, is uh, is a plotted out thing between. I, I mean, it's not conspirator conspiratorial to say that developers and politicians are 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 plotting this out. So. And um, people are getting, uh, and neighborhoods are getting fucked in the process. So I've, I've seen it going on and been ranting about it for ages. And so we have a city that looks nothing like or feels nothing like it did when, I mean, how many of you guys are New Yorkers? I, I, mean, I actually am. Uh -huh. No one ever thinks Jason I am. Jason is from, from Lower Manhattan. Right? Yeah, from the village in Soho, and, and which I thought was so much fun because my character is, is a new arrival and I think like Chipotle and City Bike are the greatest inventions. And <laughs> they are. And I can't wait till the, the you know, the yeah. Starbucks and the, everything just gets closer and closer and I'm just oblivious to what yeah. Kevin's character knows. But I actually, you know, I love the project because I actually, we came here when I was like 10. Oh, wow. To the village in the 80s and, mm -hmm. you know, the city obviously is completely different. So I love, I love that, you know, the way that, that, the project sends all of that up and explores where the city's going and what it was and what it's become. Don't feel afraid to take the mic next time. Just and you, you, had, you had like the sort of art, you know, that the, the art environment of lower of like Soho and uh, I'm from the Bronx. I'm from up by oh. uh, uh, D. Whit Clinton uh, uh, Bronx Science Marshall Loop Parkway, mm -hmm. and. Uh, the the story takes place in Hell's Kitchen, so I I did live in Hell's Kitchen on Fifty First Street, and but my character actually owns the building or has some stake in the building. Right. The, the fam he's he's inherited it from the family. Yeah, your 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 parents. You grew up there, right? Your right. Parents, and they they're been in they're the family. they're trying was to actually buy him conceived out. there as well. Uh, right. And, and um, as a idea not as a person <laughs> I, I remember across the street from from me on 51st street bruno kirby the actor yeah had, had uh owned an apartment in one of the the brownstones across the street and i i just would God. see him all the time uh he was like you you do belong to a gym you gotta you should really join a gym you know you should go to my gym uh and he was like, if you if you ever want to, you know, go, go down to um, the uh, Amish market. They had the best sandwiches. I go there, I get sandwiches. I go up to Yankee Stadium with the sandwiches. It's, it's, it's a great neighborhood. Uh, and and, uh, but he, and he, he grew up there. He As a kid, he grew up on 51st Street. His father He's was an actor. And he was known as the actor's son. I was wondering, son. How, how did he get into The Godfather? I mean, he was yeah, yeah, like yeah, a he's, he's He was a, a you know, Comic indigenous to the, to the city, you right. know, like yes. a, 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 a hometown 
Maybe he knew Marty. Celeb, and, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure he was, I, you know, go figure, you know, in the mid-70s, early 70s, 60s. He probably goes back to the 60s, that guy. Sure. But, he was um, a, he, I don't know if he was a child actor, but he started very young. He did start very young. Yeah. I remember yeah, yeah. that. I was seeing him in, like, very, right? Bruno Kirby. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, what, what was, uh, else was I going to say about, uh, um, so he had that, you know, he was like my character. In, oh, right. in that he he owned the building and he was good. Now there's this movie uh, um, uh, called the um, the, uh, the Battle for Brooklyn. Michael Kalinsky, my friend. Michael Kalinsky, yeah, yeah. These are my friends. I I showed. Oh, go ahead. Well, that 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 movie was a huge huge Impact influence on, on me. Yeah, me too. Uh, uh, I'm a fan of his other films, but then I, I started watching his documentaries, and that that one's just a, an amazing one about this guy, a real life. Hold out in what became the Barclay Center. That's right. They, there was a building there. Goldstein, right? And Daniel whole, Goldstein, right? He, the, the the building he formed it's a whole friendly. coalition, sure but right. one by one they all they yes. all kind of he was the last holdout. Got so you, bought out and I didn't know you right. knew that documentary, but I was just texting with Michael on Friday. Actually, he was here, uh, yeah. and I was trying to get him to come to some party. But uh, and yeah. we should mention Suki and David Balenson as well. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, co the, produced them. Yeah. That's amazing that you know that. It seems like we were trying. We were trying to take the, the this basic idea of like the, yes. you know, the, well, the it sort of, it's, of it's a very complicated issue, a complicated thing to try and tell a story about. You know, it's like is it gonna, yes, the, and try to make it funny at the same time. Yeah, yeah, but I think we were we were kind of going towards a, like you know, the first twenty minutes of Stripes, kind of thing. <laughs> what you know, at Bill Murray and Harold Ramis. We're back like, on that. <laughs> Wait a minute. You know, There's he's like, let me, get, definitely. let me get your last beer. No. Oh, uh, we'll split it. <laughs> yeah. you know. Maybe a little Gene Sachs, a little Neil Simon. A bit, yeah, a little bit of that, sure. There's definitely that. Uh, but the tension, there's a tension because it's a very, very intense subject, as you say, Kevin. And and yet it is a comedy. And um, I think you're doing a good job. I only saw the pilot, though. But uh, you, Yeah. Go ahead. No. I was saying that with the poor door moment. Do you remember oh, yes. the moment? Uh, oh, like, yeah. I, I oh, thought they, they did such a good job. It was and great. That, uh, Describe the scene. Too. How funny it is. I take Kevin to see these lofts, these beautiful, super uber fancy lofts. It'd be like Williamsburg on the river now. Exactly. I think that's actually where we shot. Yeah. And we're getting a tour from this attractive real estate young maven woman and she's showing us the wool washed refrigerator and the whisper drawers and the gas ranges and then she looks at Kevin's character and says, I know you're you're worried about the low income subsidized <laughs> housing and it's only at three percent. Mixed income. Mixed income but we have the poor door and it opens up this whole thing that's really ugly and it is. my character is just so it's real. oblivious. That's the, that's and the, you it, couldn't make it up, but you it, could, yeah, it turns out. Right. And that, that that's what I thought was so compelling about the life of this series is to, to be able to get into mo stuff like that and explore really yes. awkward uh, and painful socioeconomic realities with this this kind of odd couple set, set up. I can tell something's bothering you, so let me level with you, okay? A lot of our tenants are worried about the number of subsidized apartments in this building, but we have managed to keep that number under 3%. 3%? Now that you mention it, yes. That bothers me. What's that? A lot of our tenants worry about that, but I have to assure you that there won't be a problem. We have a standard separate elevator, so you won't have to worry about those tenants. You won't even know they're in the building. We call it the four-door. You've probably read the article in the Times. Yes, yes, we yes. Should... I read that article we, we, in the New York Times. So it's really just for peace of mind. The four-door. The four-door. All these buildings have one now. Why do they go through another door? It's based on income. Yeah, they keep all the low lives in one part of the building, and they use the four-door and all the higher-ups, you know, get to, it's just, it's... Well, so, it's, it's more it's that we can have... Up. It's fucked it's, up. It's classist. It's racist. It's a separate door? That's where we're at as, they... a, as a city, and... Does it lead to the same place? You're a history teacher and you don't know this? I, I'm getting really angry. It's just talking about it, okay? Um, I'm gonna go yeah. use the poor door. I'm poor, by the way, so I'm, I'm out of here, okay? Yeah. And it's the kind of comedy that we, that we really discuss, Dan and I. Like, what kind of comedy? You can take it, like, really slapstick, or, like, you know, you could take it many different ways but the comedy had to come from real situation had to come from something that would resonate 
you know, with, from from the characters in the in a real situation. Yeah, which we thought was the best comedy for us to, at least to write, and for you know these guys are great. You know the good actors that really bring a lot of layers to it, so we didn't want it to be so top level, high level. If, if that makes any sense, that it that it had to really be something like something real, like a poor door. You know, people can relate to it. If it's crazy, right? It <laughs> it absolutely is. It was in a meeting. There were a bunch of guys sitting around. <laughs> yeah. They talked about we should have a door for people that are not, you know, who are paying less. But they'll have to use that door for they to get in and out of the building, and that you know, and that was approved. And they went ahead and did it. And so, you know, that's the city we live in. And it's also crazy mm. that people are really offering $500,000, $400,000, 300000 I mean, many different stories around that. I mean, I think that Battle on Brooklyn, Battle I don't know, Brooklyn, yes. Battle for Brooklyn, I'm uh-huh. sorry, was, there was an offer there. I don't know the whole story, but. Um, yes. What was, yeah, it yeah, was some were. astronomical number, right, that they offered him to move out? Yeah, um, I think it was pretty big, yeah. I mean, there was something well, in Red Hook recently, a million, two, I don't know. What. The number in the in the series, again, it's called The Holdouts, directed by uh, Stephen Girasuolo. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Co-written by Dan Mankey. Uh, it's, uh, they're offered, uh, uh, they've been the subjects of, of these, of being kind of host, of this hostility we're talking about by the owners of the building. The guys that own the building are trying to push them out, and uh, finally they make this very, very astronomically high offer uh, or bribe, whatever you want to call it, to, for these for Jace and Kevin to move out of the apartment. And that's the catalyst for the first episode, essentially. It's like, what do you do? It's an ethical dilemma. Do you take the money and run? Who wouldn't? On the other hand, then you're part of the problem. Where do you go? And where do you go? Where, That's right. Where are these people go? Where is run everyone out of that going? And, like, yeah, right. where do they leave? Where do they go to mm. for a buyout? What are you selling out? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it sounds like a lot. Two hundred fifty thousand each, or whatever. However, it's split. Yeah. It certainly can so buy that, get you a. You can probably buy a place, and maybe not in New York, but somewhere. Can I you mean, though? you can. That's the well, thing about these. If you have two hundred fifty thousand dollars in the bank, you can. Uh, it's. It, you, you have to show how you, you're going to be able to pay the mortgage. You have yeah. to have income. There's a lot of po- uh, components to it. But anyway, I don't want to get yeah, too much. Yeah, I, I mean, that. we're at a, a time where, like, every everyone I talk to is, like, kind of like, like Steven's character in The Holdouts, which I think is hilarious, is in that they're moving to all these different places. And, you know, they're like, you know, we, 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 it's great out here. You yeah. know, it's the new Brooklyn or yeah. we we packed up. We left the city where we go. We went to Costa Rica. We went to wherever, you know. So there's this exodus because it's it's so cost prohibitive. And I, when you think about the offer that our characters get and how much they're going to sell those apartments for, it's really not that much money. Right. Yeah, that's the uh, point. And that's, have, that's that's part just to jump in. That's yeah, yeah. part of what we we're trying you know. Okay, we just did the pilot episode, but we can share like what we talked about in the writers room. Is excited about is exploring also that outside world of like where these people go, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you know what's that world out there in Croton Hudson or you know Maplewood, New oh, Jersey, right, or whatever. Right. That's right. You know, and so you know we take these characters out there. We can talk about like you know some ideas we have for future episodes, but I think it's funny, mm-hmm. you know, to play with the fact that you know Jace is trying to convince Kevin maybe to actually move out there at one point. Like that could be funny. Yeah, anything that could be funny, but that's funny. You know, Kevin is the uh, Kevin living in Cronon Hudson. Yeah, we shouldn't say no. We shouldn't say what uh, what 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 happens at the end of the first step of the pilot. That that's that's a good thing not to mention, I guess. So it's where is the where is the series is going to be on? Is it is it going to be on Amazon? Yeah. So we okay. we released it on. It's on Vimeo. Uh, we wanted to put it out there to as many. I mean, as many people who could see this series as possible. So we put Vimeo on the, or Vimeo on demand or just Vimeo right okay. now. It's not even on demand. Um, just the pilot or it's just the pilot. Mm-hmm. And that's a good we idea. Want as many people to see it as, as we can. And that's the whole point because I think people need to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Watch the pilot. What? Watch, watch the, the pilot. pilot. Yeah. It's watch got it. a, a Deidre O'Connell. Great. Aunt. Oh yeah. She's wonderful. She plays your sister. Aunt. 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 Your aunt. Yeah. yeah, yeah or yeah. cousin. Aunt. And yeah, right. She's me in, in in like Rockway or where is she supposed to be? I forget. She's um, somewhere. She lives yeah, somewhere right. on the water. She's all the way out, like living on a boat. Yeah, right. Uh, and she, yeah, she's uh, she's encouraging me to 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 sell out. 
which is you know well like, she's also at she has a other motivation she wants her she loves you and wants you to be okay yeah that's right it's, it's not it's, it's not because she's concerned about the rezoning I, I, I of think the that's neighborhood a, that's a that's a big part of the 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 uh <clears throat> the, uh, the drama <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> big part of the <laughs> big well, part that's of, one thing. That's that the big <laughs> twist in the, in the story. You mean, you mean it's for my own good? Yes. You just get the money. Get take, take the, the money. money. Yes. And, and uh, J- how can that be a good thing? How can that be a good thing? Tune in and watch the holdouts. That's right. And find out. That's right. Wait, so where are the rest of the episodes? Now, once you reel them in, you're going to reel them in with that pilot, and then where do they see the rest of the uh, season or series? Well, we have to do them. We okay. haven't done them. We've so you only them. shot the pilot at right. the station. You only shot the pilot. So uh, we we have a whole season. So you have to raise the money for the – is that what, what – uh, Well, we have to get a buyer. I mean, there's many different I see. I got you. So you want a producer, like a producer platform? Absolutely. Uh, I, I got you now. I yeah. understand. Okay. I think, do you like, want me to put this – add that – do you want me to leave that in, or do you want me to just take that part out? I mean, I think it's important. I mean, I, I think it's important. How do you want to maybe artic- uh, or word it so that way it just sounds like, you know, like uh, we have a lot of offers. <laughs> you right. know, right? We're consider we're, right. we're considering uh, the various uh, streaming platforms at the moment. Right. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you oh, talking tell to the me. mic. I mean, I don't want to yeah. like talking to the mic. Though. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to like make things up. I mean, we, no, 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 of course not. You know, I mean, I could, I could tell but you Netflix a lot of said, fancy names and people are interested right. and stuff. But the, the the deal is, is that here, here's the deal: is that you got people see the pilot. It's got a lot. You know, the series is extremely sellable and extremely relevant right now. Yes, and I think it's just the right person has to come along and want to get behind it. And I, I think it's as simple as that. I agree. Uh, does anybody here know who Kave is? Kave Zahedi. I film? do, yeah. You know I mean, Ka- I I don't know him personally, but okay. I but I know but I know of him, yeah. All right, because he also has a series. I introduced him to Breck, which is you know very much in the community and very much also I think does a lot of stuff around these sit these uh, uh, and they produced his his series. So I'm just I'm putting it out there. It's all so. The in show fact, about the show, the show about the show, and I'm in the pilot of that series because I introduced him to Brick. So we reenacted. The meeting that I set up with Brick and Kavi, they ended up pr- giving him the money to make the series. Now, his marriage is broken up. As his, so not, I saw that. Yeah, the there was a big article. Big yeah, article. yeah. So he's a, he's my current on the current episode. He, it's with Kavi. I think it came out pretty good. Check, check it out. It's uh, I like I'm it. Plugging it, but uh, I do have faith that it'll get there for sh- for certain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're we're gonna make it happen. Yeah. Very funny. Oh, I couldn't hear you. It's very, it's very, it's very funny. <laughs> yes, I. Also, Daphne Rubin Vegas. I was going to mention that. Yeah, who the, did this episode? The rest of the, the cast. It was, we got a great cast. Michael Buscemi, Daphne yeah. Rubin Vega. Michael Buscemi, of course. Nadia Dajani. Nadia Dajani. I don't know very, that person, very, but. Naja and you have very good chemistry, Kevin. Oh yeah, yeah. Not, you guys should yeah. think about getting married. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Well, is that possible, though? It's not really, mm. but uh, you can get married on the show. On the show, yeah, and that could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got some unfinished Life business. Right. They have right. unfinished business. That's right. Who do, who does she play? I can't remember. She plays. I just uh, saw it for the second time. His but. bartender, de facto oh, got it. therapist. That's right. That's right. That's right. They're in the bar that is being like everything else, uh, co-opted by Wall Street types. Eight-letter eight word in Queens. I aqua, aqueduct. Oh, yeah. That's, that's one of my favorite lines. <laughs> oh yeah, the crossword. She does a crossword. Right. Dinkins. Dinkins. Um, side note: went to the U.S. Open, and they always give shout-outs to famous people. Yes. Alec Baldwin standing ovation and clapping. Kevin, you like this really? one? Then they're like. And Mayor D- former Mayor Dinkins, and you just heard like a tennis ball. Like, <laughs> is that like crickets in the yeah. tennis stadium? Yeah, well, that's, that's sad. Strange. That's not that's right. Sad. Yeah, he, he was ineffective, but he was a good guy, <laughs> right? But for someone like he was, yeah, I mean, you know, he just didn't have the, you know. Anyway, that's another. And, and Michael Buscemi is <laughs> very good. He plays a I rickshaw driver. Yes. And you know, another person that uh, we're having a lot of fun with in terms of like. Where does that storyline go? And I mean, can I talk about some of those ideas? Can we do that? You can do anything can you want. Can we do anything Carte you want? Carte blanche. 
I mean, you know, we love Mike Buscemi's character. He plays the yes. rickshaw driver. Anyway, so he's like, what does this guy really do? And he's like wearing this dirty tank top and has one shoe on in the scene that Kevin sees him in the bar. <clears throat> and we think that he really lives in um, mm-hmm. a, like a Manhattan mini storage facility. <laughs> Which people really try to live in these storage yes, facilities. or work out of them, certainly, if they yeah, don't live you know, there. They may I'd, occasionally fall asleep by accident, accident in quote marks. Have free coffee in the morning. I did it. You really? That's yeah. right. Like you did it. When I, I did that, and when I got the script to a, an agent for like coverage or whatever, and they sent it back, and they were like, we like it, but there's one part where the guy lives in the Manhattan mini storage on Spring Street is not believable. And I was like, well, that's the one thing that's real in the entire Guys, you need to. Pilot, you, come out, you have to come out and meet the real people. Of the, the I had those lights you slap that turn on inside. Yes. Yeah, the battery operator. Oh, they give you coffee in the lobby. Yeah. And yeah. you'd go in there and change, and right. I occasionally you, you would do it at we, we, I would do it at WeWorks, but they have much better security there. <laughs> you know, but like, that's the fun. That's where it starts, that's I feel like, where it's funny, is the yeah. stuff people do to stay. Right. But you know what I mean? There's that's that a, aspect of it, too. It's that's like right. Kevin and I would go out, you, somebody not asked, like in the show, and then Kevin right. would be like, do we really need another fucking Fro-Yo? Like, I would see him get bent out of shape about new things. Do you remember the Fro-Yo rant? There was a frozen yogurt place that opened that really got him wound up. Yes. And I was like, yeah, this is that's the show of when you stick around and you're just constantly annoyed by it what your neighborhood has turned into. Well, somebody asked before, what do you do when you sell your place for and you make the buck? Right. But what do you do? Where do you go? And right. what do you, what are, what's your next move? Well, it's sometimes it ends up this, these, you, you make these crazy trips. You end up living with somebody that you normally may not have chosen to do. Well, in this case, of course, they're already doing that, but that's, mm-hmm. uh, but, or you may end up like, you know, uh, <laughs> living in a storage unit somewhere. I mean, uh, all the unofficially, char- you know, all the characters in the pilot, we, we were Having playing around with living yes. on the fringes. I mean, Kevin was saying his aunt, she lives on a houseboat. Right. You know, well, the rickshaw driver lives. Quincy in lived a- on it. Not Quincy. Who was it? Was it Quincy? Quincy. Did Quincy live on a houseboat? I think he did. Oh. Oh. There's a little bit. I of can't a- believe you just made a Quincy reference. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, I will. I think Corrigan and I may be the only ones that got the Quincy reference. Oh, I got it. You got it? Rockford lived in a trailer. Ooh, now you're talking. <laughs> Rockford. Yeah. Lived in a, right? Yeah, that was a big fan. Um, anyway. Answering uh, machine. You know, and, the, and on the other side of it, Daphne Rubin Vega's character plays Kevin's sister. You know, she sold out in another way where she's living in the high life luxury building and she yes. just doesn't connect at all. But, she, you know, it's, it's, she's kind of sold out a part of herself. And that's interesting, too, you know, to, to actually live this these in these glass tower buildings right. with the doggy bath and what else do they have and the poor door the yeah. poor door in some cases anyway and like what that does to you if you're not really connected to it yeah it could be very funny to explore too yeah. yes I, I think that it's hard for people that come to the city now to really connect with kind of what i thought was so well done in the pilot is kevin our apartment the look of it the feel of it the bathroom that's like a closet that's like a couple feet off the ground. Oh, right. And that feeling of a different New York that artists and creative people would come to and be able to find an identity in and be able to develop and foster their their talents, their music, their painting. I think that, that New York is, is, is gone. You know, it's very expensive and corporate. And it's just about something else now. Mm-hmm. So I, I love seeing, I thought that, you know, I don't know, where, where did you guys get that apartment? Yeah, I wanted to ask Our, if uh, that's the exterior. Is producer, just we have a great producer and he's scouted. Location. And he, the true story is uh, he sat, his name is Christopher Pike, and he sat outside these apartments on East, uh, I can't remember, East 8th, was it? 7th. 7th. And he literally sat there a whole day and he waited for people to exit the apartment. He said, oh, you live up there? Can I go up and see your apartment? We're shooting this. Uh, really? S- yeah. And he, and he, until he met this guy, Elliot, um, what's his name? Musician, Sharp. right? Sharp. He's a musician. He's a composer. Sharp. Elliot Sharp. Thanks. Oh, I know that name. Of course. And he's a he's a pretty well-known yeah. composer. Yes. And it was his apartment sure. oh. that we shot in. And he had oh. one of those bathtubs in the kitchen. Right. My, and he I had this My perfect, had a, it was sure. an art, art. Uh, director's dream yes because it already had uh, a ton of analog 
sort of equipment and DVDs and albums. Right. And you really Look, didn't have to do in. too right. much. No, yeah. no, right. You didn't have to, right. Art yeah. not too much set design involved. Too not too much set design. Yeah. Not too much. You know, and yes. it, was so, so it was perfect. And he, he was great. He was, you know, he even offered to do music for the series. So, he, you know, a lot of people, the thing about the series is so many people have, you know, contacted us. Like Annabella Shore is contacting me through, through Jace, through Facebook. Can I be in this thing? You know, like, I know I'm plugging names here, but Nina's friends with Cindy sure. Lauper. She really wanted to be in the pilot, really? but she couldn't. Uh-huh. So, uh, you know, all so these New Yorkers, too. These are all New Yorkers who I think, you know, are like really identify with the subject matter. Well, that's what's nice if you can. That's another helpful way to pitch, of course, the series when that comes is that you're going to have, you know, a lot of like a real uh, authentic New York cast, you know, or cameo etc etc i think that's a really good selling point like it's going to be i think they'll and once it becomes the cool thing to be on you know we, gonna, th- we think so well you see i remember when a uh, high maintenance uh, and throwing around these things but they was started of course on vimeo it was a uh, uh youtube maybe no wait where it started vimeo then it was i'm missing one thing before it went to hbo it was on Vimeo. On. It did YouTube, then Vimeo. YouTube, it just started as they put them up on their own. Yeah. Then it went to like Vimeo, Vimeo produced it, unless I'm missing something, and then finally it was bought by HBO. And so, you know, so it's these things do happen, you know. That's a great uh, story. I'm sure there's a few others that have also, I think the, uh, um, what's it? I was now I'm blanking. Broad City. Broad, Broad City. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Broad City is another example. Anyway. Yeah. Let's make it happen is what I'm saying. If you're listening, yes. go watch the pilot. Start sending in your money and to go into your mom's purse. Here's another obscure reference. Who said that? Do you remember? Go into your mom's purse and take out the green paper and mail it to Soupy Sales. He got fired for that. Nobody knows that story? No. Soupy Sales lost one of his gigs. He had a ch- children's show. And he told kids as a joke... So, yeah, got fired. There's nobody's laughing at this. Uh, but uh, d- d- just go. I'm laughing inside. <laughs> That's, I'm laughing inside. Well, anyway, you got to see it. Watch it. It's, uh, I think it's, we're going to have great success with it. I do. Do we, do we want to mention anything else or talk about anything else? I don't else? know. You know, I've never done these podcasts before, so I don't know what to say. Well, you've been right doing now. great. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, what, you know, like we're just supposed to tease the audience, right? We're not supposed right. to tell them too much. No. I guess watch. Yeah, that. don't don't give it away. Don't give it away, right? I can't, Did we give I can't away give anything? Give away what it's about, right? I can't. I can't give it away. <laughs> give it to Seventh Avenue. Oh yes, uh, <laughs> shmada, 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 shmada. So uh, great, great I like the beard you have in it. Can I? Yes, wall. Sun, sunflower? No. What yeah. you sunflower. Say? Sunflower. The yeah, sunflower. Kevin, that was good. a good beard. Yeah. But I, do you remember? I was watching it. I remember how hot we were in that apartment. That's the hottest I've ever been. In my entire life. Oh, you were and sweating. Yeah. We we were shooting, and it was so absurd because I was drenched in sweat, and my shirt was completely soaked. And I was like, "Yes, I saw. having had some experience working in the, the the motion picture industries, I said this is this is totally absurd. Like, there's no way mm-hmm. people like they, they should call uh, some kind of unit to come and arrest someone because this is too hot. And we we kept shooting, and we just. You know, Kevin's wearing that bathrobe, and they we just referenced it, how hot it is. And Kevin said the funniest thing: Would you say something like, "Who needs air conditioning? It's hot, so oh, right. it's hot, right? It's hot. Yeah. What do you want? It's yeah. hot." Yeah. That was great. And to me, I thought that was a great uh, message for yeah. the for the the show. Do you remember that? Kind of. It's a great line. It reminded me a little bit of when uh, I was watching. What was the name of that Noah Baumbach? film uh marriage story no no oh. about three films back where ben stiller and and greenberg naomi watts no the one oh. after that i think the, or two the, the they the, lived the, in the only the young or when we, we were yeah, young when or we something. were young when we're, and yeah. they're sitting around and they make some so they were trying to remember something and stiller pulls out his iphone and and he's about to look at it and and, and adam driver goes let's just not know yeah. <laughs> let's just sit here and not know because he's a hipster and it was very like anyway, I don't have to explain it. I guess it was a great line. Thank you, everybody. I, uh, I mean, I, we're done. Uh, no, I mean, I don't want to. <laughs> need... It's coming. It's, it's coming early. out now. It's, it's a little early. Well, let's say, uh, so Jace, you, you, you recently were on. You did uh, 
the Ava DuVernay film. It's yes. getting uh, lined, a lot of the awards are being announced now. And, when they see us, yes. Right, yes. when they see us. Oh, they yeah, man. Yes. Hey, congratulations. Thanks, on buddy. That. Man, that's. I play a really, really bad man. Yeah. <laughs> really yes, bad, bad, bad man. Bad, bad man. man. You all yes. over that movie, man. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, that that's was great. Uh, quite a. Liberating? Uh, qu- liberating? I don't know. No, no, it's it just terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, very terrifying. You, you pulled it up. Yeah, but also, I mean, that was '80s New York, late '80s New York. So our film, our our pilot is not late '80s New York, but I I identify with it because that's when my family came to New York. Mm-hmm. So I was where did like, they come from? From Pittsburgh. Okay, well, that's right. But we came that's in, why you were just there. Right? Yeah, I yeah. went to Xavier High School, and across the way lived Bernie oh. Getz. Bernie Getz lived in an apartment building on Twenty Third, and we in our classroom at Catholic Xavier All Boys, we would all look out the window Street. and we would look at Bernie Getz in his bathroom. Was he, oh, he's on Fourteenth Street. Yeah. I know, and it's right when that shooting happened. Yeah, we That's would all a bunch crazy. of Catholic schoolboys looking at Bernie Getz in his bathroom. I don't know. If Bernie I don't even Getz. know if people know that are listening. After, know after the shooting, after the can, shooting, yeah. You know what? If they're if you're at home and you don't know who Bernie Getz is, just sit there and don't know. Just don't know. <laughs> That's my advice. <laughs> and not know. Two train. I've seen him. I've seen him on the. Yeah. Fortunately, not on the subway, but I've seen him on the street. Yeah, uh, but is he right? Kevin, please say something. Who's there? And. And Kevin, you're doing this the all very New York centric show as well. The Godfathers, the Godfather of Harlem. Godfather of Harlem. Oh, yeah, that's People right. like wow. this show very much. Yes. It's 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 ended its its run now. It's ten ten episodes and now it's uh Is it it's on did, epics. Yes. But it, they usually have it on like uh once it's been done, then they also like it'll be on like Hulu or one of those things though. I guess so. I don't know, I'm guessing but I, I think you can still see it on Epics. Do that. Do that. Yeah. yeah. Did, they, is, did they post them every week, or did they put them all up at one time? I don't know how. They, oh, it's on... Uh, Epix is a cable station. Yeah. I, I, so I guess it was I, 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 once a week. But people uh, like this very much. It's supposed to be very good. I have to, I have to, I have to ca- catch all 10 episodes. I know one guy wa- who was watching it, you know, watching every episode. <laughs> Mark, Mark Kozlik. He, he, was, he was a fan of the show. He's a fan of God, Godfather Hall and fan. He really liked it a lot. Who else is in that show? Um, Giancarlo Esposito. He's oh, the I best. Yeah, he's um, great. He's done my show. Vincent D'Onofrio, Forrest Whitaker. I mean, come on. Lightweights. What a great cast. Uh, Just a bunch like of lightweights. Chaz Palmateri. Don't know him. Yeah, come on. That's and a great cast. Chaz Palmateri. Don't know him. Yeah, yeah Chaz Palmateri. Yeah. Wow. He's good. What is your character? He's good, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's your... No, he's very helpful to me anyway. Uh, uh, it's from the makers of Narcos. Mm. Oh wow! Okay. Um, I haven't seen so that's it. That's good. Sorry, but I, it's about the mafia and the right. the uh, uh, Black Panther, uh, Black Panthers, and uh, Nation of Islam, and it's it's set, set in 1964 in Harlem. It's about. Uh, um, Bumpy Johnson, played by oh. Forrest Whitaker, he gets out of jail and he wants his turf back, but right. now it's under the under the control of the Italian mob. So there's some great scenes between Whitaker and D'Onofrio, uh, and and uh, and uh, yeah, I played I played uh, I played uh, 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 Vin, uh, D'Onofrio's underboss, where he plays Vincent the Chin Gigante. I played a guy wow. named Benny Eggs Mangano. <laughs> He's <laughs> a real guy. He's, a, he's got his. Look him up on Wikipedia. He's a World War II veteran, hero, mm-hmm. war hero, Benny Eggs. Benny Eggs. And uh, but uh, yeah, D- Vincent kind of helped me out. He kind of helped me out. You know, I was like kind of. Hey, I kind of needed a job, and he he helped me out. He's yeah. a good, really good. Wow. I did a, I did a Law and Order with him once, and I I got killed, and I had to lay on the floor for. For hours, Tough and he job. was picking my brain apart on the floor, oh. and I was so stiff I couldn't move. What do they do about your breathing? And and then he said he said, "Try laying on that floor for three weeks in a Stanley Kubrick movie." <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, wow, you know, whoa! Yeah, yeah, I, was, I got a full metal jacket. I got the reference. <laughs> full. He was giving me tips because like, when you yeah. lay on the floor, you think it's easy, and, it, and, a bathroom and then you, tile. you try to stand up, and it, you can't move any. Anything, right? Uh, uh, uh. So and that was my. That's my only. Right, you know, you Cooper, have better stories than that. That's my only Vincent. I, I have. I have a laying on the ground story. Dead story. It was me and this other guy who who gets shot. This is on a different show, not Godfather Hall. 
it was in Greenpoint, we're on, and it's raining like it is t- today. We we had to lay there while there was like a page, uh, like a like a half a page of dialogue left after our deaths. So <laughs> we just had to stay there in the background, dead, getting rained on. And uh, the other guy was was he was talking to me in between takes while we're lying on the sidewalk. He goes, so. You know, everybody thought I was crazy for wanting to get into to pursue an acting career in my 30s. And um, and uh, and look at you now. Look at us now. We're just lying here on Messerol Street. Uh, um, no, anyway, so uh, it, 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 you know, it's a real old part of Greenpoint. Well, all of Greenpoint is... Skin is old. Not for long. I'm lying there. I was lying there, looking up at the fire escapes, the old, old style building, thinking, "Hey, man, it's like the holdouts. It's like the holdouts, <laughs> man." <It's laughs> yeah. Well, I'd it, rather you know, be working on that show than lying here in the street like this. But you know, it was hot in that house when we were shooting the holdouts. It was hot. You know, you just gotta. You we're always working under these really oppressive. <laughs> Circumstances. It's like a really sound guy hot, in the bathtub. Really cold, <laughs> really wet. You know, oh. you know, we risk our lives doing this yes. stuff. You know, we 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 risk getting pneumonia. Yeah. You know, it does not go unappreciated. No, but this is all, all seriousness. You, this was one that was worth it. It was very, it was very gratifying creatively working with with Kevin and these I two gentlemen so. and Nina right. and the rest of the great cast. And it, it was extremely fun. Right. Sometimes that's it's right. not fun right. and then doesn't turn out well. Yeah, that's the worst case. Yeah, yeah, sure. But this there's, was there's a, there's a feeling we were going for, right? That's like, it. You know, we were trying to like you know you, it's these days when you're making movies, you're making a TV show. I don't know. It's now that's two different businesses now. Making a TV series and making a movie. It's like some people. Like you know, Andrew Bujalski, you know, he's like, I can't make a TV series. I, I'm I'm used to having a two-hour story that kind of fa- finds closure within that ninety. Or Just hasn't been offered minutes. the money. That's, that's becoming all. rare, though. That two-hour. No, 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 it's not. That, no, hold on anymore. for a second. <laughs> <I'm> just, that's <laughs> that's just kind of too snarky. All right. <laughs> I'm just when kidding. that when you when know pa- I have the guy when on when, uh, when Bujalski says that he means it. He's not a a, a ten-episode series guy. He's not like. Uh, it's a great form. It's it's kind of it's 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 revitalized the careers of of all of our great film actors. They're all on television. That's now. very true. But also, but, but I will Buzowski say that he'll do. A, still yes. wants to make the traditional ninety-minute film. You know the the sort of mm-hmm. single shot feature. Three yeah, through the three extra or or, or or not or no structure at all. Um, okay. And uh, um, but. What I, the point I'm trying to make is you're either telling a story or you're trying to create a mood. And, and um, I think that f- r- r- the, the essence of the holdouts and what we were trying to do to, to begin with and what we were was to create a mood, about a, like a New York mood. Everyone kind of has their idea of what that is. Like, well, I'm from New York. I don't know. You know I, I know what, 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 what the old New York was like. Uh, and, and when did you move here? You know, you're always sort of ch- checking each other's creds, you know. Ah, you don't know what it was really like. But every, you know, it's like, uh, well, let's say, you know, I'm from, New, you know, uh, uh, New York of the 70s and 80s uh, in the Bronx, you know. I mean, I didn't even know that, that there was a difference between the Bronx and Manhattan. You know, I thought it was all New York City, you know, and you grew up in Manhattan and... um uh, Nadia, Nadia Dejani. She grew up in in the in the oh, West yeah. Village, and like she knew Adam Horowitz, and she knew like the she was around when the Beastie Boys started and stuff, and like like uh, um, and I, I I I got to know her in the late eighties because we ended up my first movie was called Lost Angels, and all these actors you probably went in on, on that movie, right? You know. You didn't, you didn't get in it, but he went in on it. You know that <laughs> everybody, yeah, yeah. All, all the actors our generation wanted to be in that movie so bad. By Hugh, Hugh Hudson, it was like a uh, was it a uh, it was supposed to be like a one flew over the cuckoo's nest for teenagers, um, but it, it was yeah. I remember meeting Nadia on that, and 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 everybody, all the kids on that movie bonded. We all Nina Shamashko, David Herman, uh, uh, um, who else? Well, some some other, but we went. We ended up going to uh, Adam Horvitz's birthday party, like on on like o- like October thirty first, nineteen eighty eight, 
down on West Broadway, and and then it turned into Nadia's uh, pre Thanksgiving, her annual like pre Thanksgiving yes. party. She did it for 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 years and years and years, and then stopped for a while. Now she started doing it again. But you know, it wasn't until I met her that I realized that you know, like the kids who grew up in Manhattan, you know, like like uh, who started like with rap music, right, or or the Beastie Boys, anyway, like that they were the you know the the children of artists, like you know Adam Harvitz, the son of Israel Harvitz, the playwright. Uh, I think um, um, Adrian Brody, his his his, uh, uh, his parents worked at the Village Voice, you know. You know, I, I so I grew up in the Bronx. I didn't have like kind of show business connections or connections to the. Well, I can't say I didn't have connections to to the culture because my mother was a lifetime member of the Art Students League up here right on up West Fifty Seventh Street, yeah. and she's an, an artist. She went to the High School of Art and Design, and then went to the School of Visual Arts, and she sort of found her voice, in, 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 in her creative voice in in New York City in the late fifties and the sixties, and she knew about like the beatnik vibe she hung out in like you know cafe reggio back when it was like you know people were snapping their fingers and it was like Hip bob Cats. dylan was <laughs> playing bob dylan was playing at the gaslight and you know that hey, was, we watch mrs Mazel. we know what that was her new york that was her new york right. and that was the new york that that uh the, the the promise of that new york was attractive to me growing up in the bronx and so we were trying to it's like as long as we can just establish this mood you know like just get, you know, like, just, you know, uh, um, and that's all we need. You know, we, we kind of was like, well, we got to put a story to it. You know, what could it be about? And it's like, I don't know. I, I think uh, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to say it was uh, it was a it was it was kind of a we were looking for a vibe. You we, know, we got a little bit of like it. I thought we kind of the Scorsese it. vibe. There's the Woody Allen yeah. vibe. We were trying to find some kind of mm-hmm. New York vibe. Yeah. And uh that's well, a great yeah. way we, we to, caught a piece to, of it I it's, think it's a great way to, to sorry no, 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 to yeah. sum it up I mean we were you know we have to create our own you can world. point the camera at any anywhere you know in New York City as long as you the, the camera's rolling and you're catching it and you watch it later it's like yeah I, I know that street you know well you gotta have a vision for what you're doing and yeah. it, that's what you're creating is uh create a vision for the series and the, the vibe is another way yeah and, and, some and by the way don't chastise me on my own podcast okay uh, uh no, kevin's I, a member of the family circle though oh that's true this is your yeah. third of, you, i guess you can third third appearance on the podcast. i want to say one more and thing i want there to be a fourth and a fifth so the, the, the yeah so do i <laughs> <laughs> do i yeah oh have you done you've done a He's, you know, I, I, I know, but I might not with be one, on with Andrew. You're going no, now the, after that's this? the insinuation. No, there's no insinuation. Um, you're definitely <laughs> the Anthony. No, your first time with Andrew. In fact, um, I have to make that. I don't point, know if you remember that, Adam. I, I, I agree you know. with you. No, I agree. I was thinking maybe he did uh, maybe a one-off. Like uh, sorry, episode. this this whole interview is kind of like the holdouts, where the tone of the conversation goes back and it's forth true. from drama to comedy. We don't Tension. really know what we want it to be here. Attention. We're just kind of spitballing and trying to. <laughs> That's the show. You know. <laughs> Listen to the podcast. It's kind of. Oh. It, it's uh, true. What were you saying, Steve? You were s- trying to say I, I understand. That's what I, you were trying. <laughs> I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I was just trying to say that. Yeah, the spirit, the mood that Kevin was talking about, right? That, you know, like you got to, things are changing. That's up to you and and, and Dan to some degree. And we were coming from like things are changing in New York, right? So like it's going to change. Things, you can't really stop it. But you could try to save something from not dying, right? So, So like, you know, you could try to save this this world that we're trying to create, this guy, you know, you got to stand up against like these forces. Like, well, there's something worth saving. And I was thinking about before you guys came, like when I lived in Paris, what I loved and what was funny about Parisians when I lived there is they will do anything they can to save the, whatever they can about their culture and their language. They they will go crazy. They don't care. They're like, no, 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 things are changing. Computers, and you're going to order online. They're like, no, 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 no. I think this, they'll fight to the ends to save their culture from changing. And I think it's funny, and it's, well, it's desperate, and you got to do it, because if you don't do it, who's going to do it? And it's like, that's, that's where this drama and this comedy, it is a fine line, but that's where we're coming from, where I could say in, in the room, 
in the writers' room is just like, he, you know, Kevin will do whatever he can, and he enlists Jace to help him yes. to save this thing that's eventually going to change, but he'll fall right. doing it. Yeah. But he's gonna he's gonna go all the way. Right, and that's nicely summed up in that la- uh, maybe it's the penultimate scene in the uh, the landlord's office. The the yes, the, where you know what what happens there. Is a, is a nice way to sum that up. Like With the great this. Chris McKinney, who's also just want. really wonderful and also a New Yorker. I don't know where Chris is from. I think he's from Brooklyn. He's, uh, he went to Juilliard. He's a great actor, and he plays the landlord. Uh, and the son is played by Francis Mateo, who's also a New Yorker. He's from, he's from um, Washington Heights. That's great. Um, yeah. Thank you. Well, is that it? We're gonna, Thanks, buddy. Well, you know, we're going to... When uh, hopefully maybe there'll be another uh, when when the when the subsequent episodes are produced we'll 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 get back and we'll keep plugging away. At Dan, can you pass me that seltzer over there? On the yeah, side? buddy. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> <dehydrated>. <laughs> I got it. I'm on it. It's perfect. It's like an hour. Really? What's yeah. The, I never did this before, so I don't know. What I'm There's doing. no rules. Some of my I segments are 20 minutes. Some yeah. of them, you know, like. Is that, is, did you get everything that you wanted? Because 